ربنا إني أسكنت من ذريتي بواد غير ذي زرع عند بيتك المحرم ربنا ليقيم الصلاة فاجعل أفئدة من الناس تهوي إليهم وارزقهم من الثمرات لعلهم يشكرون Muslim Television Ahmadiyya International extends the greeting of Ramadan Mubarak to all our viewers. May Allah enable us to reap the blessings of this sacred month. Ameen. Muslim Television Ahmadiyya International ki janib se tamam nazreen ko Ramadan Mubarak ho. Hamari dua hai ki aap is babarakat mahina ki beshumar faziliton aur barakaton ke waris bane. Ameen. حضرت مسیح معود علیہ السلاۃ والسلام نے فرمایا اس پورا شوب زمانے میں جب کہ ہر طرف ضلالت غفلت اور گمرہی کی ہوا چل رہی ہے تقوا اختیار کریں Huzur is saying today we shall begin from verse 157 which Huzur will now recite along with other verses which follow on from that. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تكونوا كالذين كفروا وقالوا لإخوانهم إذا ضربوا في الأرض لو كانوا غزا لو كانوا عندنا لإخوانهم إذا ضربوا في الأرض أو كانوا غزا لو كانوا عندنا ما ماتوا وما قتلوا لِيَجَلَ اللَّهُ ذَلِكَ حَسْرَةً فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ وَاللَّهُ يُحْيِي وَيُمِيتُ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ وَلَئِنْ قُتِلْتُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَوْ مُتْتُمْ لَمَغْفِرَةٌ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَعْمَةٌ خیر مما یجمعون ولئن متم وقتلتم لیل اللہ توشرون فبما رحمت من اللہ لنت لہم ولو کنت فضا غلیظ القلب لَنْفَضُّوهُ مِنْ حَالِكَ فَعَفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاغِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ اے وہ لوگ جو ایمان لائے ہو اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ اللذین آمنو لا تکونو کاللذین کفرو او یہ ہو بلیو بی نوٹ لائک توز ہو ہو دس بلیوڈ وقالو لے خوانہ مزازو ربو فی لفدے ان ہو سے اف دیر بردرن ون دیر ٹرول ان دیر لینڈ اور گو فورت تو وو لو کانو اندنا ما ماتو ہیڈ دے بین ویڈ اس they would never have died 
that Allah may make it a cause of regret in their hearts and Allah gives life and causes death and Allah is mindful of what you do Allah is watching well watching clearly exactly what you are doing this is Surah Ali Imran chapter 3 verse 157 He was asking about the verse yesterday. He was saying that yesterday we discussed something in which Huzur presented a verse pre uh, quoted by Imam Zainul Abideen. There was a reference that was presented in which he, Imam Zainul Abideen, scolded certain people who were insulting Hazrat Abu Bakr Hazrat Umar Zanhu. And the whole verse, Huzur is saying that had not been um, re read out completely and now Huzur wishes to present it. The, 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 three, the discussion in three parts are all taken from the same uh, verse from which Imam Zainul Abideen drew, drew his conclusions. وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْلَّوَلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنْصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ تَبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانٍ رضي الله عنهم ورزو عنه وَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا أَبَدًا ذَلِكَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ So he's saying what is the next verse which was a verse of prayer You are saying, where is this? Is not the one? Well, as in a jaw, you are saying that uh, why have not be, they not been kept collect, uh, collected, collected, uh, sorry, put together? You are saying that this is why I was saying that we, whether or not he's giving reference of the same verse or two verses, the, he was uh, referring to two separate verses, and uh, get me this. Uh, Get me that verse which is of Surah Hashir. Was really saying, Is this the entire verse? He said, Okay, that from one verse he drew two conclusions in two parts one about the migrants and one about the Ansar, and which is this verse that, that I have just recited, that I have just presented, and that the third conclusion is drawn from another verse which is from Surah Hashar Surah Hashar Huzur is saying that it says it's Hashar 9, 9 and 11 Muni um, is saying that um, uh, that uh, is uh, the same chap the same subject or in uh, it's um, in detail is been presented in these three verses Huzuri is saying that let me um, read them to you and then we will we will see whether the verse has been taken from two separate verses or whether it's been taken from verses that were one after the other in the Holy Quran in a separate place. This was asking which verse it is. Because so we're saying that there are three verses, one one after the other, which are all in the same chapter, and from these three verses, three conclusions have been drawn, and in that verse there are two uh, verses, which two of the 
conclusions are in the, in the other verse which were presented by mistake. So Huzur is saying that there is no point in having uh, presenting two different uh, verses from two different places if it's all in one place. saying this is the uh, subject that was being discussed the meaning Zur is saying Zur is saying that um, the subject here is that when the believers sometimes would get um, certain a booty one of its usages is that it should also be used on the muhajireen on the migrants that is the the one fifth that was uh, given to the Holy Prophet وسلم, of that um, this is completely false that God forbid the Holy Prophet وسلم, was using it for himself and he kept it only for his own personal use is there were some different uses for it from of which he would use a minimum upon himself and he would spend more of it um, among the needy uh, and the list of those people are found in the Holy Quran and in that when mentioning that Allah says it is for those m migrants as well who are fuqara who have who have nothing left there who have been ousted from their homes and they have been separated from their wealth that means that wealth have been snatched away from them but they are not such beggars that they should go and beg from people despite the fact that they have absolutely nothing left yet they only ask from Allah and from him they beseech the uh, blessings of this world and they also desire his his uh, pleasure and whatever they have and what no matter what their state they are always ready to help Allah and his prophet and they help them and these are the people who are called Sadiq or the truthful ones these are those migrants who who uh, either left with the Holy Prophet وسلم, or they came afterwards from uh, Mecca to Medina and among these are all those holy people who um, uh, the um, Mira Madali who is a commentator, a Shiite commentator has um, insulted and also other Shiites as well who are saying I'm ho I hope it's not all of, the, all of them so Imam Zainal Abideen indicates towards these, this verse and he asks that are you among those migrants about whom Allah has said this? It's a very, it's a, it's a very uh, logical, uh, very intelligent uh, statement that you are not those from whom Allah um, w was uh, pleased. You are those who, is, who are talking against those from with whom Allah was pleased. And the second thing is, those people who who prepared their homes well imana and their um, their uh, faith their belief imana min qablihim meaning that before their arrival before the arrival of the migrants to medina there were some pious people in medina who in order to welcome them they prepared their homes and also they um, beautified and embellished their faith 
and in a very beautiful way they became they prepared to to uh, to become their hosts yuhibuna manhajara ilahim each one who was who would come towards them uh, in a state of migration they would look at them with love and they would um, they would love them they would love them extremely to an extreme extent and they did not regard them as being difficult for them to look after them and they never desired those things which they were blessed with which the migrants were blessed because the migrants were um, had a lot of blessings showered upon them afterwards because they um, they they were um, they were very successful in businesses etc and they did not look at them with envy and uh, as to why allah was being was blessing them so much and mimma utu also may mean meant that whenever the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam separated some wealth for them because they had lost everything then at this they were never uh, jealous it never hurt them and these are the people about whom Allah says that these are such um, good people that despite uh, despite severe straitened circumstances yet they were giving others precedence over their own selves and for their sake and for Allah's sake they would uh, spend on them and the truth of the matter is that the one who is saved from the miserliness of their heart of his heart is indeed the one who is going to be these are the people who shall be successful well as in a job who is saying that um, who's really saying that when after reading this verse Imam Zainud al-Abidin, who's saying, what's his name? Haral Zainud al-Abidin is presenting the second part and asking the people who are um, making these uh, these um, who are, who are uh, asking him that, wait, are you those people that they, such people who did not feel any burden in their hearts because um, of what was spent on those people and they um, did not spend on their own selves they spent on them instead and he said are you among those people he said no you're not and then there are such people who came afterwards as well and what how did Allah define them what kind of people were they who came afterwards and yet they were written among the in the list of the uh, the good people which are which is walazina jau min baadihim yaquluna rabbana khfir lana wa li ikhwanina what they, they say that oh Allah forgive us as well and also those of our uh, those of our uh, brethren who have um, exceeded us in our faith so those people who were the first generation who who were before us in accepting faith and O Allah do not let any rancor enter into our hearts against those people who were um, who, who believed don't let any rancor in our hearts enter into our, uh, into our hearts ever against them Rabbana inna karawufu rahim O Allah you are extremely merciful and oft returning with mercy Hazrat Zainul Abideen address these um, uh, transgressors and say you were not those among those people because they were the companions were you among these you were not among these either so instead of saying this he says that you too have yourself bore witness that you're not among the muhajireen or the ansar and now i will i want to give the witness bear witness that you are not even among these people because you have rancor in your hearts against them this is the pure um, the pure common ground upon which the muslims can come together 
uh, today and no other there is no other um, a common point at which pe people can come together so forget about all the other um, uh, all the other um, points of view um, so we're saying people ask me these questions um, in the in question ask sessions is it does it look nice if children sit down and they talk about their uh, parents and say this person my our parents made this mistake or made that mistake this is it's it's very despicable these are those blessed people who are now in with Allah and Allah is the one who's going to judge um, among them on the day of judgment and each um, there's there are many um, many curtains that have been formed from uh, for different centuries bet among between us and them and there are many uh, doubtful references etc and many other doubts some intentionally and unintentionally which have entered into this whole discussion so to if today we make ourselves um, to take on the role of Allah as being the one who knows about everything and we should make the decision that such and such person made it the wrong decision and did, uh, they did this or did that made this mistake or that mistake this is extremely ignorant and this is akin to committing the suicide of faith so it is it doesn't become anyone whether or not it was a mistake their those people's uh, affairs should be given to Allah uh, should be left with Allah and do not bring those those um, those um, disagreements to the focus um, uh, and you should not become uh, the, the judge was we saying that some people they say that what happened in certain such war what would you say about them I reply to them that they were among these people which are which are mentioned in these verses Allah is the master and he will forgive whomsoever he pleases and whomsoever he will he will um, punish whomsoever he pleases it's not our job and it's not uh, up to us and is we, we don't dare that we should sit today and make a decision about those uh, blessed people and we should uh, bring them as um, as uh, defenders in front of us and we should make a decision against them Th and this is completely wrong so is saying this is the this is what I um, I ad advise all the uh, all the Ahmadis who's really saying that uh, having said that sometimes when people make make uh, specific allegations against a certain holy people then one has to defend them but but um, it is completely wrong to criticize uh, any holy per holy personage you should stop where the, the defense finish finishes was always saying that sometimes if you make a mistake like that then you should um, um, seek forgiveness of Allah but it is our obligation and our right to defend them but we should not go ahead of that at all some people um, then say that uh, Aisha might have done this or um, she might have done that or the Ali uh, Al -Zan who might have done this or might have done that and and um, but that uh, uh, Ali or may have made a mistake and instead of um, um, allegations that why did he not p uh, punish the people who who um, who, who murdered Usman Lizan, who all of these things who are saying that the people present all such um, such matters but who is saying that due to certain um, reasons sometimes it is our um, obligation upon us to defend our uh, holy people but we must never we must never attack them and so these are the verses the three verses with reference to which Imam Zainul Abideen, uh, said this and also about Imam Baqir there's a similar there's a similar um, reference that he drew conclusions from the same from similar uh, uh, verses and he defeated certain opponents with them now we do says we I wish to return to this verse Liya Jalallahu Zalik Huzur Sayyid I've read this in, entirely in its entirety 
is a Zorabu fil Arde or Kanu Ruzan. As far as the word Zorab is concerned, it is especially to be noted that the Christian Orientalists, when they use the word Zorab, they translate it to mean that it refers to a journey which is undertaken for the purposes of uh, trade and does do not give it any other meaning therefore they say that the muslims had only two types of journeys either they would go uh, they would um, lo go to to do trade or they would go to uh, loot uh, which which was um, to, for do, to, do, to do jihad and there was no third reason and they say that its um, meaning in the in the dictionary is that to undertake a journey mainly for the sake of um, trade purposes who's always saying what about worry and bell Who's saying? Who's asking where the references are? Who's saying that I have perhaps picked up another verse? Why have you tell you? Tell, why did you don't tell me before? Who's saying that um, you only remembered after I had searched for them? Montgomery Ward says when the journey for trade is probably implied, just as expeditions or race for booty. His laughed and he's saying that just as it is obvious that all the the battles were for looting, for booty, therefore the trade obviously means that it's only for the sake of uh, wealth, acquiring of wealth and cannot refer to any other journey. Azul is saying that the, what uh, is the guy, person from whom Arab princes come to study and uh, he is being supposed to be a new generation orientalist and very fair-minded and this is what he's like. And very, Mr. Very writes with a view to merchandise. He says that this is the only translation. And then another interesting thing which um, came to the f uh, to the forefront with this uh, research when is what he's saying when he studied the um, Arabic dictionaries. Then those people who to whom uh, Huzur uh, referred, who Huzur asked us that. Uh, Huzur asked them to find the meaning. They Huzur found out that the dictionaries gave the same um, the same meaning, and they were lame. And um, there were two two dictionaries, uh, Manjad and Lane. Although they are supposed to be very um, uh, very authentic books, they have uh, hidden such meanings. And when I heard this, I I thought that. I couldn't believe it, that it was true, but those um, are written by other ulema, they have said that this is one meaning, but there are other meanings as well, to undertake a journey or for trade purposes as well as for other. As well as saying Munjad and Lane both, they all, they both hide those other meanings. They only present those meanings that the journey should be only for trade and they, do not, they conceal the other meanings, whereas the other dictionaries the most um, um, outstanding of which is Imam Rahib's dictionary, which means that it's a, a journey undertaken for any purpose. And another very, a very interesting point has been raised by Imam Razi, which I will tell you later on. There's Akrab al a book which, which says, those reading the Arabic, so the writer says that Zarab means a journey which includes a journey undertaken for the purposes of trade and also a, a journey undertaken for the purposes of jihad and asra and it includes the meaning of asra and tezi, uh, sorry, and uh, to go fast with expediency toward a particular direction and asra zahaba when it is said that it means to 
to save oneself from problems quickly and escape somewhere and go somewhere else. So, so all the uh, people who undertook journeys to, to save themselves, they were uh, also did this the same, and they did not go to undertake. They go to get um, wealth. They left their wealth, and so this proves that the enemies of Islam, the opponents of Islam, have a clique, and this their um, their uh, their attempts against Islam are very deep. Once Huzur is saying that I analyzed this and I was very surprised to learn that no Muslim has ever had the had a had the capacity, capability to write a commentary on the Bible, whereas they have they think that they have a right to um, to comment from uh, on the Holy Quran and they, their commentaries are quoted and no one, no is, uh, Muslim um, ever writes against them. Now, uh, Ahmadis are being chosen by Allah to respond to them and they will always do so. Huzur saying, when I analyzed this, I was very surprised to learn that no one, no Hindu, no, no Buddhists, no Zoroasters, or people who, um, who um, who, who follow the Confucius religion have never commented on the Bible, but they have uh, commented on their books and the special age of uh, col col colonialism and imperialism. This was a part of its scheme, a grand scheme, that wherever they go, you should attack their uh, uh, local religions and you should make them slaves of Christianity and for these to um, attain this end these people have tried very very hard but their intentions were all false the, the uh, intentions were to to prove the ascendancy of imperialism and of Christianity so that their political um, high, height should be attained and the Muslims are really saying that it is I'm very surprised how insensitive they have been that in response to them they did not do to them what they were doing to us whereas there is a lot of chance of doing that a lot of scope of doing that he's saying this is why I have made a team here of uh, Ahmadi uh, men and women from whom Huzur is saying that he's uh, whom he's asking to do research many of the um, um, the references of the Orientalists, so these uh, ladies and gentlemen have prepared for me and there are many other projects which I have started, Bible study projects and many other projects in which they, these people are working extremely hard and very sincerely. There are scores of Ahmadis uh, men and women who are getting prepared and I have told them that eventually I want you to write a commentary on the Bible. This is what I'm preparing you for. I'm specialize you in different parts and if by the if uh, Allah wants me to live here for for any longer for any longer then I wish to start this um, task in my supervision and as far as the Bible commentary is concerned this is not something which is new after partition when we went to Rabwa and from the beginning I had begun this uh, this uh, task I used to be in Waqf Jadid at the time, Huzur says, and Khalid Masood, who is the Nazir Murama at the time, I used to take help from him and other um, um, scholars as well, Mawlid Bashi Qadiani, I got involved in this as well. So uh, taking help from these people, I used to combine those verses. Uh, uh, about whom there are biblical uh, uh, verses and you can compare the two together by putting them in front of each other and what what became clear very uh, very lucidly which will always be proven by future research is that wherever the Holy Quran has apparently kept a reference of the Bible uh, and um, mentioned it, then it is the Quran has never copied it. Where only s that much of the Bible's um, references have been approved, which are logical, and those things that have been left, they have not been regarded as being important. And anyone who has any logic will realize that they are not important, they are not logical, and the Quran is always. Um, 
oppose that which is illogical and has not regarded the illogical thing to be from Allah. And it has shed light on the Bible that this is this particular part of it is the word of Allah, which the Quran is uh, proving true and history is uh, is uh, giving is making it to be true. Sorry, is is also prove, uh, witnessing that is true, and this is the thing which should be. Um, which which needs to be corrected. Allah said this and not this. So certain people who uh, who um, read or some some things they enter these things. So the Holy Quran um, agrees with the with the truth contained in the Bible, and it does not agree with which which is not true in the Bible. This is a great service to the Bible. So, from this point of view, if the, when the research was taken forward and whoever Huzur said that I went, then I always found this uh, similar things, and and this is why it is uh, it is important that we should we have to make it clear to these people as to what they are and. Uh, what they have done to the Bible and that the, the Quran understands the Bible better than than they do and the, it, it makes the Bible clear and it the, uh, makes the people's hearts accept it so from this point of view this study will be undertaken I'm saying the reason why I am announcing this here at this uh, point for this purpose yeah, because there are many countries to, uh, towards which Christians have done many things and we don't have any um, we, and when we uh, study make the study then their research of, on the Bible should also be kept in view just as these people have studied the Christ, the Muslim commentators but there is a difference and this I wish you to uh, to to note this difference when they have studied the Muslim uh, commentary then without exception they have always chosen those who, who, who no, even if they are not to be trusted at all but who have um, who have uh, been f at the forefront in so in uh, alleging illogical things about Islam was are saying that um, there are for example Waqti which has things which are uh, unproven and then they take out of that whatever they want whatever that of that rubbish the Ahmadi researchers will have to do this with righteousness and they should research properly and whatever is true that is what they should hold and the, those things which are uh, uh, improper they should not they should not be waste their time in that so we should teach them how to do proper research and you should not learn it from them and you should not take on their color of uh, research their evil methods of research in, or dishonest ones and the other thing I wish to make all the Ahmadis understand across the world that just as I said at this in this respect in different countries in different eras Orientalists have been born and um, they include Arab countries in Arab in Egypt for example there's a lot of work has been done and the Christians tried very hard uh, to um, to to embed themselves in uh, Egypt, and they worked very hard there, and then in Palestine, etc., as well. And then, if after after uh, India, the the research against Islam in order to give uh, favor to the. Egypt so to, to Islam to Christianity was done in um, in Egypt in Syria and they were all uh, a part of the same place um, a long time ago it was called larger Syria and uh, it included Palestine etc as well so the Ahmadis that live in those countries they should make their own teams um, whether educated uh, youth who whether it's their subject or not the pe people who are, who are saying that I have chosen here in the Irafi Khat Sahib is especially good at making teams and now although he's not the, the president 
but because he has a lot of experience, so I make good use of his um, experience and I may, and I got him to make teams. And out of the ladies, there is Navida Shah who has been given a special quality by Allah that she uh, gets um, ladies' ha hearts with her, involved with her, and she makes these teams. And the teams will not be selected from those people who were um, who are um, getting some kind of religious or Arabic education. Some are scientists, some are computer specialists, some are in other some other science. Some is a, an expert in accounts. They belong to different walks of life, and they are. Um, I train them by giving them certain projects. Uh, what is the authenticity of the Bible? When was it written? And what have these people said? How much have they said that you can um, prove? You can uh, you can support? You can uh, rely on the authenticity of the Bible. So you could, I told them to go to the sources. And so there are many uh, interesting things that have come to the forefront. Who are saying there are many other uh, interesting projects which we are working hard on for the past two years and sometimes every week two or three times uh, I meet these groups and whatever projects they present we discuss them and then I make them understand that now you should take this uh, path now you should take that path etc so such projects can be um, can be should be begun in countries where they can be be started, especially in Europe. The the problem is that the Germans um, researchers have researched a lot on the on the Christians Christianity and also uh, about Islam, and some of them have taken on a very in a, in an uh, opposing manner as well, and uh, until. Those uh, books are, are read in original, original German language. The research cannot be done properly, so German uh, youth and the Lajna, they should make such uh, research groups and send me the, the summary of what they're doing so that I can tell them from the beginning which way they should go and which way, where they can improve. And similarly, there is a lot of work has done has been done in France and uh, some extremely horrific attacks against Islam have been done by uh, French um, certain French uh, researchers and uh, Christianity has also been researched very deeply in uh, in uh, France and also upon Islam similarly in Italy there is a lot of work that has been done in this in the same field and then the library of moscow has a special place in the whole world and the initial classical books um, perhaps the moscow library is the best in the world and our ahmadis who are who are there who have become an ahmadi or who are who are there to learn languages it is a, obligatory for them to go to those places and to, to carry out this research and there are many different uh, aspects of research. For example, when we were doing research on the Baha'i, Baha'is, we found out that um, the Baha'iyat began with the, uh, under the auspices of uh, Russian intelligence, and it is, didn't have to do with the, the Western Europe. There was a man who was posted in the embassy for the specific, pur specific purpose, and uh, this was. Um, we went forward in his constant supervision, and from the very beginning there was a um, some hypocrisy, which was uh, which was formed because of the certain disagreements with that person, and Yahya, who is called the dot, and um, Bahá'u'lláh, who is called the Baha of Allah, knows by the God's other name Baha. So the disagreement among the Baha'is, he was he did played a very important part in that. And in he went to Russia and then he gave his report in Russian language, which was published in the, the magazines at that time and now we have heard learned about them during our research. And the same when the same groups began to research, they found some old uh, references and now we need to go further in those.
Therefore, in Russia, the, uh, those people who have the capacity to go to those uh, libraries, I have sent some of these references to some missionaries, a missionary who is there, it is their obligation to, uh, to um, be attentive to this and to to, <clears throat> to find out more about this because it is wrong to reject someone just because of um, because somebody attacks something the the, prop, the proper method is to uh, investigate it thoroughly and then reach its conclusion and this is what is istambat is in the holy quran the holy quran says to us that why don't you present this matter to someone who have the capacity to make a, a, a decision which is an informed decision so this is what i want to see how i want to see you so says as a proper uh, believers as the quran which is uh, which the quran describes so is only saying the people in russia should uh, make use of the libraries the local libraries and they should further the cause of this further this research in spain who's only saying that um, they had uh, clear, cleaned out islam as far as they were concerned but the other tasks uh, the uh, scholarly tasks were of the time which was uh, done by those um, jewish people who ran from Spain and they reached the European countries and sale is a production of the same era at the end at the end of the 16th century there was this uh, exodus of the Jews in 1692 when they were ousted from that place and before that although there were opposition against them and transgression against them but they were coming out slowly so there was a, a type of exodus from there and after that the light of Islam, that is the, the light that was gleaned from Islam, from the Quran by the Muslims, they were entered into France, that knowledge was entered into France through these Jews, and then from there it spread into Germany and in uh, UK and Britain, etc. And in the same uh, era, the people who had extreme animosity with Islam, the such Orientalists were born, and they were afraid that those people who we have gleaned our light from, we thought that they were ignorant, uh, dark, uh, and they had uh, darkness, but so they did not want it to have a good effect on Christianity. So, in order to address this, the certain priests um, thought of the schemes to to uh, blacken the name of Islam. So, they were saying, so this, these things are all, well, uh, must all be researched further. He was saying that um, the, at this juncture, I wish to, this is, I wanted to mention this so that, so that those um, responses that is in our destiny to do, we should do them. They ha this was began at the time of the Prophet Islam, and he undertook this single-handedly, and it's incredible how he did that. The way he he did it was uh, one is amazed as to how uh, how how much um, how much he did throughout his life, and that um, of prophecy of the of uh, of the Prophet Islam, and the Sheikh al Sheikh al Masih, that you are that blessed and great Messiah whose uh, time will not be wasted. So you are the servants of that Messiah, which which he had single-handedly taken forward. So now do not leave them. So now and make it enter into this new era, where in all those countries where there is um, there are attacks against Islam, you should respond to them, and our new generations should be should be uh, should be pushed into this. And this is our the response to our uh, our um, uh, our problem or tarbiyat. They, when I say to these these children, these youth, tell me that if we hadn't if we hadn't done this, we don't know where would we we would be now. They are in a kind of uh, intoxication. Whereas other uh, youth are um, being intoxicated with drugs, they are getting their intoxication from uh, from. Uh, 
um, they 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 are involved completely into this because and sometimes these girls girls tell me to pray for their um, exams because they say that they have no time to to study themselves so this is their emotion with which they are go, they go forward I was really saying that um, uh, there is a lot of scope in America as well this very Sahib is from America. I used to look for him here and uh, afterwards I found out, I discovered that in, in those days America had sent some people and uh, for approximately 45 years by living in different parts of Indi India. He, um, he did certain he, um, conspiracies against Islam and he made some horrific attacks against it. So these people have been doing these tasks from that time, so the great jihad, the promise of Islam began in favor of Islam. Now it is the time to take it forward with a lot of strength and power. And I hope that um, all the youth of the Jamaat should pay their attention to should pay attention to this, no matter what their field of knowledge. You know, saying what we saw in Jamia about um, the Christians, those were at the time of um, the promise of Islam, and nothing has been done any further. And it was only a small bit of research that was done by Sheikh Abdul Qadir. This is not research that is uh, only one person's research should be enough. There are many numerous avenues in which um, uh, teams upon teams should always be involved. So the German, uh, the German uh, researchers should be take the researchers, German researchers should take over the German scholars research of the German scholars and same in France, etc. Huzuri saying that we should te teach them in their own language about the Bible, uh, that how should we should you do commentary and where the Quran has been attacked, you should no make a note of that and you should contact me and I will tell you then as to how they should be responded and from where these such um, responses should be, uh, should be, should be searched, searched out as to where we should uh, we should research and find the answers. We were saying that this is um, I was talking about something else and I went somewhere else, but this is a kind of zarb, but not for the sake of wealth. We were saying this is the door from which I went out, and I wish to tell you that they are wrong and they this is their conspirators and their. Um, there are people who write their dictionaries and their, uh, their historians, they all come together and they try to make this um, idea about the Muslims, they make this, they wish to make it known that the, uh, the Muslims were nothing but looters and they only, this is the only reason why they undertook their journeys and the Quran is full of this uh, journey, this, um, Religi this um, teaching that Siru Fil Earth study uh, uh, about the planet and about the universe and look around in the in the planet and do research. This is the, the Quran's this is Quran's teaching and look at what they are alleging towards the Holy Quran. They are saying that this is what I was I I was saying this with reference to uh, the word Zarab. Ghaza Ghazwan, who's only saying that I've solved the matter of, uh, of uh, the other word, sorry. Zarab, now we go towards Ghaza Ghazwa. Who's only saying that Ghaza Ghazwa is to intend something or to, to want to do something or to ask for something. And this, so this means to ask, to need something. And when in Islamic terminology, this means those battles in which the Holy Prophet himself took part and those jihads which were uh, done at the behest of the Holy Prophet but Hizur himself did not take part in it. They are called Sariya, so Saraya refer to such those uh, jihad efforts of the companions of the Holy Prophet وسلم, or their um, f fight with, with the enemy in which the Holy Prophet وسلم, himself did not take part. And what does Qasad mean? Qasad means to get the 
pleasure of Allah, to earn the pleasure of Allah, jihad is that which is for the sake of uh, getting earning the pleasure of Allah. And this earning the pleasure of Allah, whether you prevail or you become overwhelmed, in any case, this is it is based on the pure intention as to why you did, undertook the journey. Every journey begins with intention and ghazwa means means the earning the pleasure of Allah and, and does not have any other intention whatsoever Mufrabadat Raghib writes about the word qatl that the qatl has different meanings one is to kill someone through some method to to cause someone to die the difference between death and qatl or murder is qatl is such a death which is which occurs at the hand of man and and uh, besides that all the other types of death are not called qatl or murder they are called death but there are other usages of the word qatl as well qatl al khamra khamra al ma which means that I put um, so much water in the wine and made and killed it. It means that it, it was finished by putting so much water was uh, put in it. Who's always saying that some people uh, put water in uh, tea and kill it in the same manner, and they say this way it will in become increased. And when there is more, uh, when there's a lot of guests, and some people even kill the curry. And to humiliate someone is also called qatal. Qatal the fulanan qatal tuhu. It means that I have completely finished someone, I have uh, uh, humiliated someone. And, and then there is another very interesting meaning that is uh, presented by him. That verse which our which is a which is under discussion in, in between us and the other people who are non ahmadis in that at the end of that verse allah says they have they most certainly have not murdered him one of these meanings are that it is absolutely certain that they were unable to murder him but because there is a, the verse is speaking of a doubt and that is the its uh, meaning therefore the word for certain has been presented in such a manner so that those meanings can also be derived from that therefore imam raghib has presented this in this manner which is that they most certainly did not kill or did murder jesus they were not sure about the uh, the messiahs being killed on the cross this is what he says it may it means that whatever happened whatever occurred they, it, they were always in doubt and as to whether or not they were actually able to kill him or not and this is exactly what the holy quran was trying to prove that the one whom you thought had died it is false and the people who were uh, at the t present at the time the people who were witnessing it they were doubtful so how could you be so certain so the people who it wasn't just about the Christ, the Jews um, that Allah says that this doubt uh, prevailed. Allah says in the Holy Quran, in minhu, that both of the people who were present at the occasion, that is the Jews and the Christians, were both um, were doubtful as to what exactly happened to Jesus. So all the other things are just... Um, uh, just uh, their thoughts and their conjecture and it doesn't doesn't have any certain certainty in it hasratan is a word that is used and hasrat means hasr can means to make someone to make something naked or, or to remove a concealment a, con a curtain hasrato and zirai just as um, huzur is saying that uh, when uh, when somebody wants to inject someone as well, this is what he's saying that um, these two doctors sitting before me, Dr. Mujib and Dr. Masood, and they are both, uh, Dr. Mujib is shaking his head in agreement that um, uh, this meaning of this word includes to remove the 
uh, to remove uh, the the sleeve in order to inject someone and the person who is watching it is also is also got a hasrat he is looking at it with longing as it was to what is happening to me huzur is saying that um, um huzur is saying that um, by the grace of uh, Huzur is saying that hasra also means not to have a covering on their heads. There's everyone here who, uh, most of the people here have a covering on their heads. All the children usually have it except one person when he's just put it on his head as well. Another meaning of hasra, hasra is uh, to be tired. To be somebody, if someone becomes extremely tired, then he's called hasir. Therefore, the Holy Quran says in Surah Mulk, Yanqalib ilaykal basaru khasiyam wa huwa hasir. ثُمَّ رَجَيْلَ بَسَرَ كَرَّتَانِ يَنْقَلِبْ إِلَكَ الْبَسَرُ خَاسِيًا وَهُوَ حَسِيرٌ That put your, cast your eye once again upon the universe, you will not find any defect, anything wrong anywhere, and look again, and your uh, sight will come back to you, it will be completely despondent, and will not be able to find anything wrong with it. So the normal meaning of the word hasrat, to have a longing for something or a pain, as a result of not being able to attain something, this has to do with this, uh, this tiredness, a particular kind of tiredness, when one is completely um, despondent and one, is com one cannot attain one's, uh, one's uh, end, one's aim, then what the state of a mind at the time is called hasra, hasrat. Qalu li ikhwanihim subject. Huzur says, before I return to that um, subject, I now again read, read this verse. After, uh, and now Huzur wishes to shed light on the different meanings. Ya ayyuhu al-lazina amunu la takunu ka al-lazina kafiru wa qalu li ikhwanihim iza zorabu fil ardi wa qanu ghuzan law qanu indana ma matu wa ma qutilu liya jala allahu zalika hasratan fi qulubihim wallahu yuhi wa yumit wallahu bima ta'amaluna basweer In this, the thing which needs to be um, mentioned, which are be under, brought under discussion, is that, O oh, ye people who believe, be not like those who have disbelieved, and who say of their brethren, the first um, discussion by the commentators, uh, from the, 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 um, those who disbelieve, but does it mean the hypocrites and the disbelievers as well? This is a discussion. Or is it especially the um, just the hypocrites are mentioned, or does it also include the disbelievers? As far as the kufr is mentioned or disbelievers are mentioned, I think that it doesn't refer to the other um, disbelievers. I think it refers to the hypocrites because the disbelievers did not say to them that if you had stayed with us, you would have been in peace in order to, um, to spread um, disappointment uh, in the hearts of the Muslims. They, um, when the if the disbelievers used those um, such uh, methods as to dis make them feel disappointed, then they became um, hypocrites and did it. Then they adopted the guise of a disp of a um, hypocrite. So a a hypocrite is someone who spreads conspiracy, who conspires and who spreads disappointing thoughts uh, uh, by coming inside the company of believers. Huzur is saying that um, the people who are with them Huzur so is saying that they, their companions would not die as we saw in uh, sorry Huzur so is saying that it, people say that Ikhwan could mean um, their brothers as well but this is not true um, but uh, because some 
um, some commentators have said that this does not refer to their brothers or their brothers in religion. They become their brothers, they pretend to be their brothers. And the reason why they do so is because they are their brethren in terms of their uh, their tribe being of the same tribe, etc. And this is there is an example of this found in the Holy Quran. And Nizu said, I wish to present that before you. As it is mentioned about Hazrat Hud, Al Islam, that towards Ad we sent its brother Hud. Waila Thamudin Akhahum Swaliha and towards the people of Thamud Allah sent his, their brother Aswale. So if it means if it's taken to mean that um, the, reli the, the religious brethren then this is this is uh, an attack on our our uh, blessed prophet so it means they were only of the same tribe so the where these people used to talk or where they used to do their discussions those people have been identified because they were not the brothers of the migrants. Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul and his companions were, did not, could not have called the migrants their brothers. They were, they had rancor against them. They were uh, jealous about them, and they thought that they were going to come from the outside and take over our uh, local politics or uh, the power. So it means the people of Medina. The Ansar within the Medina, uh, within Medina, the helpers, they had nothing, they were not under the influence of Satan at all, but and, or against, against their, the hypocrites' influence, but there were some weak among them who had to, uh, who had to be with the Muslims because of the treaty. So in, about them it is said, they used to say to their brothers, they used to say this to their brothers, Iza zarabu fil ardi o kanu ghuzan, law kanu indana ma matu. Huzur is saying that uh, I drew the conclusion before as a, in response to an orientalist attack that if you think that this was only, this occurred at the time of battle and at that time, God forbid, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu thought that these people would um, become traitors. This is completely false. Some of them were in the included in the path of in the in the war, in the field of battle, and they did say some things. But when they returned, and they, they become affected with the uh, with the things that were said by the hypocrites, and they agreed with what they said. But the occasion of that was not the uh, field of uh, the battle of Ohod. It was the streets of Medina. So this this uh, this verse is saying. وَقَالُوا لِإِخْوَانِهِمْ إِذَا غَرَبُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوْقَانُ غُزَّنْ Zul is saying that um, this is makes it it's, um, causes a mistake with the way it's written here. إِذَا غَرَبُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوْقَانُ غُزَّنْ When they um, undertake a journey in the in the earth or they go for a ghazwa, لَوْقَانُوا إِنْدَنَا مَا مَاتُوا if they had been with us, they would not have died. They could not have said in the field of battle that if they were, if they were with us, they would not have died. They were present at the field of battle. Therefore, they were not included in that verse at all. But they are included in another verse. But their statement uh, has uh, this occurs. Or this takes place in Medina and not in the field of battle. This makes it evident that they said they um, they said in their field of battle that we would not have died there. They said about our field of battle rather. And this means that all of the decisions are in the hands of Allah. 
they are concealing in their hearts that which they do not in their bosoms which they do not wish to um, wish to um, display disclose to you so whatever ill thoughts they may have heard they conceal them in the field of battle and when they return to Medina and then they were influenced by those um, those uh, headmen and they then they, they said so they did say that, but not at the, although they meant the field of battle, but they weren't there. And when it, they say here, they actually meant there. So they could have, because they were in it, so they, in the field of battle, so they could have referred to it in this manner and say that, that even if you had been in your homes and those upon whom um, the death had, had been destined, through death, then they would have uh, got out of their beds and they could have then said themselves, God, gone forward to, to meet, meet their destiny. Now Zul is saying that I'm returning to the verse that we are talking about right now. Ya amanu la kafaru wa qalu uh, the, the translation here is they said to their brethren, whereas meaning actually means that those people who were of uh, their own um, tribe, their own people, so Samud was, for example, of the same people, but they weren't, he wasn't their brother in religion. Or, so when these people travel in the land or they go forth to war, we were saying, as I have um, explained before, as far as the phrase is concerned, a, a battle is called a ghazwa when the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa is, is involved in, in, a, in a battle, but this isn't the original Arabic meaning, it just means to go out for a particular purpose. But here, that is not meant. Ghazan here means to undertake a journey for the sake of jihad, but Imam Razi has said a very, very Im a beautiful thing. He said that Zwarab is also can also be done for the sake of uh, with the intention of jihad in the path of Allah. And the difference between that and Ghazwa is that Ghazan is a small, minor. Um, journey. So he's saying that Ghuzan is, sorry, Huzur said that's not right. Um, Ghuzan is that which is undertaken for the purpose of jihad, but Zarab is not a small uh, battle, it's a, it's a long drawn out battle. So Imam Razi thinks that the Holy Quran has um, said this explain the same thing in two words which as if which means that even if your um, journey is of a few uh, of a small journey of a small um, um, not very, to a near, nearby place like in the Battle of Ohod or in the Battle of Tabuk where it was far away so in both cases you went for the sake of Allah you left your homes for the sake of Allah and these are the people who are who die for the sake of Allah those people who go um, who go um, on trade journeys, they are not killed in the path of Allah. So they both refer to Ghazi, that is those people who have undertaken a journey to fight in the cause of Allah. And about them, they say, these people said that if they had been with us, they would not have died and now they would have been murdered. So the death has been likened to Zarab fil Ard and Qatl or murder has been likened to uh, um, to the other word, who's already saying that, do they think that when they go on a journey, they are never, they can never die? It means that after a long, drawn out, tired, which uh, a journey which uh, could make them very tired, then they could die. So there are extreme difficulties in the path of uh, Islamic battles, and just as we. When we reflect upon the journeys undertaken by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then we realize that those people had to um, had to undergo uh, um, long periods of hunger and thirst, etc. And even though 
they did not die in the fields of battle. The, the, the difficulties of the, bat, of the journey themselves caused them to die, and if they had stayed at home, they would not have died. This is the reason for this is so that it would be a, um, a desire in the hearts of the believers, sorry, of the disbelievers, who are saying that I have looked at the commentators and uh, I have um, and I have uh, realized that none of the things that they have said about this is uh, is satisfactory. In reality, this this hasrat or this regret is because their attempts will be will be um, their attempts will be lost um, and they will be disappointed. And Allah will tell them that go on and try as much as you can. And those people who belong to Allah, you cannot stop them from from uh, from. Uh, doing all this and for helping Allah and going in this battle so Huzur is saying this is what Allah means and Allah says that I'm we are letting them say these things so that they can always they always look at this with regret and none of their attacks can um, can uh, come to any fruition which they under, which they attempt against the believers and Allah says that Allah responds to them Allah you 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 meet but Allah is the one who um, who gives death, who, who leaves, lets people live or gives them death. Wallahu bima tamaluna basir and Allah is uh, well aware of or, and keeps a, can keeps an eye on what you do. Zul is saying, apart from this, I didn't, could not find anything which the which the commentators may have said, which is especially worth mentioning. And most of the time, they have. Um, Discuss, being discussing words as to what ghuzza means for example and what qatar means etc about hasrat for example they say that here it means that when the the the, the relatives of the of the murdered people when they when they think of this and when they think that they would who died would be would be saved. This is completely untrue. It's got nothing to do with, with the reality. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu companions who went with him and who who were martyred, their um, people who were left behind, their relatives were very happy. And um, after generation of the generations, they were very proud of what happened to them. They would not have had any regret at the at the at, um, by, by instigations after the instigations of these hypocrites. So they they used to reject the, these things that they said the hypocrites said and they and uh, they never um, they were never deceived by what they're saying and in fact they used to um, they used to tell other tell other people that um, to have to show patience and they used to console them this is something which is it's seen even today and it is not something which is only found in the past. The, the people of uh, Jamaat Ahmadiyya who are martyred today, they, they are uh, people who are with them, who, who are left behind with them. They are exactly the same. And there is not a single one of them or, or who have any cause of regret whatsoever. Who was saying only yesterday I got a, a letter from a, a beloved sister of mine that when we went to um, to console some people who whose um, relatives were murdered and uh, were, were martyred, saying that we were we were trying to console the the, the mother of the person who uh, who was martyred, and uh, she she was saying that she was trying to console us, and she said that my my Khalifa, why are you crying? I'm very happy. I have five. She said that she had five sons, and if even if they all died for the sake of mart martyred for the sake of Allah, she wouldn't care. And this was their reaction. <clears throat> and about them, if it is said that after they martyred, after they martyred, they may have they would have said that if they had uh, they, that if they were here they wouldn't have died if it had been there they wouldn't have died this is completely false and this is an allegation against the the relatives of the martyrs was really saying that all the martyrs that uh, the relatives of the martyrs i've seen in my life before khilafat and after khilafat as well one not a single one of them have the same reaction uh, not a single one of one of them has any reaction like that we have we are learning from we have learned from the companions of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
um, uh, style and their path. And today we can bear witness through our uh, practical example that what they were saying and how they felt and what they went through were, was abs is absolutely true. And the regret was in, in the hearts of the uh, hypocrites and they thought that no matter how hard we try none of them can break and come to us and none of them will ever say that our uh, our people would not have died if they had um, stayed at home but in this respect as I was saying for the sake of um, um, to expect for the sake of explanation I wish to explain sometimes some uh, hypocrites were also died when I said that there were no hypocrites died then when I when one reflects upon the history that is before us and as far as I am aware that there is not a single hypocrite mentioned that he died in the Battle of Uhud and the reason for this for this is that the 300 hypocrites who were with Abdullah bin Ubay bin Salul, he, they left at the beginning of the battle, they didn't take part in the battle, and the others weren't such that Allah should throw them out of um, of the uh, of the believers' um, pale. They had some weaknesses in their hearts which came out and then Allah forgave them, so there were no um, hypocrites present at the time, so how could they become martyred? And in any case, hypocrites cannot be martyred. What I said was, should not be thought, should not be thought of in this manner that it should, it never happened that a non-believer should have not died in the in the Muslim battle. This there is this is a very s certain uh, reference that a very powerful man once um, took part in an Islamic battle and in concealment because the Holy Prophet وسلم, never used to permit anyone like that to take part in the battle about whom there was a known, it was known for certain who was in, uh, that he was an idolater or a non-Muslim but the one who used to say that he is that then he he is a Muslim then he wouldn't he, the Holy Prophet وسلم, would not go into his heart and say no that you are not a Muslim and just like the Muslim always these days do uh, if someone was, says he was said he was a disbeliever and he said he wanted to take part in a in a, in a Muslim battle the Holy Prophet would reject it and say the same for a uh, disbelief for idolaters even if there was a very a, sh a great shortage still the Holy Prophet would say no and if he said I, be, I want to become a believer then he said the Holy Prophet ﷺ would have said, okay, fine, you can join in the battle. He did not say that, how could you become a Muslim in just one minute? This is the truth of the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, that he, accept, he accepted the one who said, who claimed that he was a Muslim. He didn't say that you must have something else in your heart. But such people used to be, sometimes used to be tried, but not as um, rejecting their Islam, but by accepting their Islam and that is a separate subject and people used to judge as to whether or not they were true but they used to be recognized by their deeds so a similar um, incident is uh, found in history that there was a very powerful idolater who wished to or at least we no, people didn't know that he was a disbeliever an idolater and he was uh, a um, hypocrite and he took part from the side of the Muslims in a battle and he uh, uh, did some great things in the battle and the people who were watching were very were, were amazed and he was he was everybody was um, uh, praising him that this is look at how he fought and how he died and the Holy Prophet said no he did not get martyred he was um, he came here to avenge the death of one of his beloved ones he he took part in the battle because the, the tribe who had killed his beloved, today they were fighting against us by um, and becoming our op opposers, opponents. So he uh, joined in the battle because of uh, this personal vendetta, not because he was on the side of the Muslims. Who saying, so this decision is to be made by Allah and by his prophet. So you, one cannot say that no uh, uh, hypocrite can die.
in the in a field of uh, an Islamic battle, but the Holy Prophet وسلم, was not. Uh, he did not make the Holy Prophet وسلم, uh, Allah Allah made the Holy Prophet وسلم, well informed, kept him informed about such people because the Holy Prophet وسلم, had to pray for those people, etc. But about the Battle of Uhud, there is no such report that a person. Um, would have been told, sorry, the whole Prophet would have been told about someone that he was an, a hypocrite and he died as a hypocrite in the field of battle. Wallahu bima tamaluna basir. Wallahu bima tamaluna basir. Iske mutalik koi about this um, th this segment of the verse i cannot find any matter significant matter which i i could present before you with my with any commentary with any observations of my own it's just it's a general expression and this has to do with our day-to-day -day life allah says wallahu you hear you meet wallahu bima tamaluna basweet allah is the one who gives death and uh, who causes death, you hear where you meet, he keeps people alive or he gives them death, Wallahu bima tamaluna basweer, and Allah is, um, is aware of those deeds that you do, and the reason why this is said is because the, when the hypocrites said that they, if they were with us, they would not have been killed, they have been told that this is not the end and all if a person is died or um, or he's uh, killed this is not important even if they weren't they weren't murdered this does not have is not does not um, give people any advantage because Allah does not look at the time of when someone dies Allah looks at their good deeds or their bad deeds so the prayer that you should ask is and the desire should be that if if we die or whether we are killed we should die at the, at the, the while Allah is pleased with us because if we have bad deeds and our um, we have a long life then that long life will be a source of um, destruction for us it's not a source of success so Allah is saying that Allah regards this as being irrelevant talk as to why how someone died or when they died, the important thing is that he die uh, when he was a when they were uh, regarded in the eyes of Allah to be to be performing good deeds or not good deeds, and this is not the be all. Um, and the uh, final, the actual decision will be made by Allah on the day of judgment. Mazuri is saying that um, there is no time to look at, to begin the new verse, the new verse right now, but a couple of minutes are left. In any case, as already saying, I have made it very clear to you that the Orientalists, they are very cruel and they uh, conspire with, uh, and they uh, they make a clique with each other. So they, they um, even if they don't make it apparent, they are they conspire. And when they when they see that someone has um, has made a, a, a particular when they had they had made a they take on a, a particular idea then their dictionaries etc they all follow the same idea and so the what they what they were talking about merchandise and when they say that the um, the muslims only used to undertake uh, the battles for the sake of booty i don't know if we should take this up right now i will i will prove it to you afterwards that these of uh, with many references this is completely uh, utter, utterly false and we uh, we ask allah's help we beseech allah that allah should g grant us help in this great jihad and may uh, allah help us and many ahmadis should come forward in this jihad and now because now there's a time to completely dis to completely vanquish the uh, christians in this yeah. Yeah.